I'm Vashi, I'm in my late 20s and I like to talk about finances, well-being and being single. If by some miracle you've clicked on this video after YouTube has recommended it to you, please stick around, join the community because I love making friends. So welcome to first part in my 10 part investment series. Before we get into it, I'm just going to go through a few reasons about why I started this series and what it's going to be. But I'll be super quick, so stay with me, okay? So like I've mentioned in my previous videos, historically, investing has been this scary and mysterious thing, you know, reserved for the wealthy, the rich, or people who actually work in the profession, usually male, usually white, no more, however. Over time, and especially over recent years, the number of retail investors, so that's investors like you and me, have grown significantly. And this is probably because it's become more accessible because, you know, we can now do all of it on our phones. Second, as a female, and that too, a female of colour, typically in the past, our mums and our aunties have left the finances to the males in the family, so you know, their husbands or whatever. And that's all cute and stuff, but being the strong, independent females we are today, that cannot be us. Okay? And even myself, growing up in a single parent household with my mum, managing the finances, the older I've gotten, the more I've realised she didn't have a clue, mate. And so I'm determined to fix it. For us, you and me, male and female, there's enough room for all of us to be financially savvy. Anyway, I haven't seen anyone who looks like me, you know, a brown female, kind of cool, <laughs> talk about this stuff. So if you do know someone, or if you do this yourself, please let me know. Um, I want to be your friend. <laughs> you know, I consider myself to be a spiritual being, and a lot of people have this impression that in order to be spiritual, you have to kind of give up caring about all things to do with money, and you know, you have to remove yourself from the capitalist society we live in. However, if you think about it, the places where you've learned all these spiritual things, or these spiritual leaders that are sharing their light with you, have all done so through capitalist means. So you know, you've probably attended a conference, or you've bought a book, or you've subscribed to their channel. All of these things are providing them a means to continue what they're doing. And so I believe, you know, we should strike a balance with these things. Responsible capitalism. I heard this phrase recently and I really like it. However, I will save my thoughts on this for a another video. Okay. That being said, I'm making this series with the intention that you can sit down, take notes, and go at a really slow pace. And hopefully, by the end of it, you'll feel a bit more confident and informed about all of this investing malarkey. And if you find any of what I discuss in my videos in this series useful, please share it with your friends, your sisters, your moms, and your neighbors. If you have any questions at all, please pop them in the comments down below and I will definitely get back to you regardless of when you're watching this. Was that quick enough for you? Okay, let's get into it. So it's important for me to mention this. I have a background in financial services, but I am not a financial advisor, so please do your due diligence before you start investing. This is edutainment before you try and sue my ass. Investing is a risk. Different investments will have different levels of risk and no investment is risk-free. If someone tells you otherwise, run. Your investment can go up as well as down. So here are some things you should definitely do before taking the plunge. Get up close and personal with your money. Before you start investing, you need to have a pretty good idea of how much you actually have available to invest. And to do this, you need to be really clear about your outgoings, so the money that you spend, and your income, which is the money that you earn. 
sit down and go through your bank statement and make categories for the different types of things that you're spending. So whether that's food, clothes, travel, etc, etc. Write this all out and you'll have a really clear picture of where your money is going and how much you'll have at the end of the month. I suggest you do this for a few months just to get a better picture in case you had an odd expenditure for one of the months. Also, it might be worth checking out your bank's website. Most banks have loads of tools and budget trackers and financial planners that you can use at no cost that will help you get a better idea of what you're actually spending and how much you have left at the end of each month. So, you invest all the excess, right? No, because you need to set aside money for emergencies. And that brings me on to the next thing, which is setting up an emergency fund. And I don't really need to explain this one, do I? This year, more than ever, has shown us the importance of having an emergency fund. And it's actually shocking how many people in the UK don't have one. I mean, just check this statistic out. Some people say you need about three months worth of expenses in your emergency fund. However, some people also say you need three months worth of salary in your emergency fund, which if you think about it, can take a really long time to accumulate and set up. I think as a minimum and as a starting point, you should have about $1,000 or pounds in your emergency fund. Before you have this sorted, it's probably not wise to do any sort of investing. And this account should be separate from your savings account and something that you don't typically dip into unless it's an emergency. So no dipping in there for some Jordans, okay? In this series, I'm going to predominantly talk about long-term investing, which is money you're putting away for years. So, you know, five years, 10 years. And in order to benefit from investing, you wouldn't want to touch this money. So it's really, really important to have money set aside for a rainy day. Pay off your credit card debt. If you're considering investing to grow your income and make money, you should probably pay off your debts first. In particular, I'm referring to debts that have a high interest rate. So you're talking about things like credit cards, personal loans, and you know, buy now, pay later things. All of these things that I've just mentioned can be super useful if you use them correctly, but you shouldn't really be investing if you haven't paid these off first. And that's because the interest or the money you earn on your investments will be lower than the money that's being added to these debts each month. And so it's really wise to kind of get these out of the way. Once you get into debt, it can be super hard to come out of it and it can turn into this vicious cycle where you feel shackled and tied down to this debt. And so, you know, it's wise to use these things responsibly, pay them off at the end of each month so they're out of the way and out of mind. There may be some instances where you enjoy being shackled or tied down, but when it comes to money, no way. It's a little bit different for mortgages and things like student loans because you tend to pay these off over tens of years and the interest rate on these things are usually lower. So as long as you're meeting your obligations for these payments before you start investing, you're good to go. Get protection. Okay, so this is something you might want to consider when you're getting up close and personal with your money and especially if you are responsible for someone else and that's insurance. So this could be something like life insurance which pays out a sum of money to someone you nominate after you die. This could be something like accident or critical illness cover which pays you a sum of money if you were to get into an accident or get a serious illness which means you're unable to work or income protection which is a type of insurance that pays you a sum of money if you were to experience an unexpected shock to your income like losing your job. So typically, you will pay into these policies on a monthly or a yearly basis and they usually have varying levels of cover and what you choose is up to you. These things might not be at the forefront of your mind, especially if you don't have any other responsibilities, but it's definitely worth considering in the longer term. 
Some employers may actually provide some of these insurances for you. So please check with them to see what you're eligible for and if you can start contributing through your salary. Okay, so probably the most important one here, do your research and get advice. Hopefully you've made it this far into the video if you're curious enough about investing to, you know, put that extra bit of work in and you're willing to do a little bit more research before you take that extra step. It's absolutely essential to do your research before you invest any kind of money and if you're looking to develop a long-term investment plan or invest large sums of money, I highly recommend you speak to a financial advisor to get some guidance and support. They can usually set up an action plan for you, find out where the gaps are and see how some of your investments can potentially close those gaps. Like I said at the beginning, a lot more people like you and me are investing now and they're getting a lot of their information from social media. You'll have probably seen on these sites people bragging about the hundreds and thousands they've made overnight through investing. And whilst this may happen, there are also loads of people, I guarantee, who have made the equal or probably more in losses that you will never hear about. So don't let something that you see on social media rush you into something that you don't really know much about and that you're not comfortable with. Take it slow, do your research and be patient. There are also so many scams out there at the moment. So if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Like I said at the beginning, do your research and please be careful. Okay, so the things I've mentioned in this video are in no particular order. However, I probably wouldn't start investing until I have these in check. The next video, part two, will be on what the stock market actually is. If you're here early, firstly, thank you. You'll probably have to wait a couple of days before I upload the next one. However, if you're here a few days later after I've uploaded this, please click on to the next video. I will see you there. Okay, see you there. Bye. <laughs>